Hi, I'm João Coelho. I'm an undergrad student at UFMG, and I'm currently developing a project at the Compilers Lab using the Clang library. In the previous video, I showed some of the interfaces we can use to build tools with Clang as a library. Today, I will show you how to build a minimal Clang plugin, explaining what is the boilerplate you need to set up to be able to build your tool over it. So, what are the things you need to implement to get a Clang plugin up and running? Well, as we've seen in the previous video, Clang plugins run front-end actions over code. Front-end actions are interfaces that allow us to write the code that we want and have Clang executed as part of the compilation process. It's our entry point when writing Clang tools with libtooling and Clang plugins. For plugins, there is a more specific interface which inherits from front-end action called plugin AST action, which is the one we'll cover. Plugin AST action is a specific kind of front-end action. We will write our action class inheriting from plugin AST action. When we run our plugin, Clang will process the code and generate an AST object. It will then pass this AST object to our action class, and this is where the plugin we write begins its execution. As we are writing an AST action, we need to provide it with an AST consumer. As we'll see, the consumer gives us some ways to access the AST object. There is one called Handle Top Level Decal. This one allows us to access the entries in the AST for top level declarations, that is, any declaration that is in the outermost scope in the program file. This method will be called when the compiler processes each top level declaration. There are also other interfaces, such as Handle Translation Unit, which gives us access to the entity in the AST which represents an entire C program file. This is called after the compiler is done processing the AST for the whole file. This is the one we'll use for our example today. There is also a pattern of visiting the nodes in the AST, which we accomplish by implementing AST visitors. Finally, all that's left will be to register our plugin. This will allow us to load our plugin from a shared library at runtime with Clang. So, let's start with the implementation. The plugin we'll build today is very simple. We want to be able to print the AST for every function declaration in a program. First, we'll look into the plugin AST action. Our plugin will be called hello, so our action class will be called hello action. Its main purpose is to implement this method, create AST consumer, which returns an instance of hello consumer, which we'll implement in a minute. But before that, we need to talk about parse arcs. This is, according to the official Clang doc, the main difference between plugin AST action and the regular front-end actions, the ability to handle command line arguments. We won't use this for our example, but when you need to incorporate command line options into your tool, you'll likely be using this. Even though we're not parsing any arguments, parse args is a pure virtual method inherited by hello action, so we need to define it here, otherwise we won't be able to compile our plugin. If you decide to use command line arguments, you can find them at this parameter here, args, so keep that in mind. Next, we need to implement this hello consumer here, so let's do it. Again, our plugin is called hello, so let's name the consumer hello consumer. It has an instance of hello visitor defined within it. Don't worry, we'll get to hello visitor in due time. It'll be the star of this episode, but so far we're laying the basis upon which it'll work its magic. This handle translation unit is how we get access to the AST. If you remember from earlier in the video, I said handle translation unit is called when the compiler is done processing the whole program file, giving it this AST context object. It contains the information gathered in the AST of our program. We then give it to our visitor object so that it can, well, visit the AST. Finally, let's implement our visitor. A quick side note. The visitor class we're about to implement follows the visitor pattern. You can read more about it in this book, Design Patterns, by the Gang of Four. It is one of the behavioral patterns they describe, and is useful when you have a structure of objects upon which you want to be able to perform various actions. This is exactly what we want. We have the AST, and we want to do many things using its nodes. One way we can use this class is by implementing the visit methods it exposes to us, so let's take a look at a few of these. We could, for instance, define the visit function decal function. On the AST claim built, there are many nodes which represent functions. For each of these, the method visit function decal will be, will be called, and we'll be able to use this node however we want. 
Notice that the method receives a function declaration object. This is the AST node I was referring to. We proceed to call this dump function. All this does is print the AST representation of our object. We'll see it in action at the end of the video. We can do the same for parameter declarations, that is, the parameters of our functions. There is even a visitor for declarations. This one will visit every declaration in your program. After writing the visitor, all that's left is to register the plugin. Here we add our action class, HelloAction, to the registry. Then we name it Hello. This is the name we'll use when we need to tell Clang which plugin we want it to run for us. And we give it a brief description. This is all we need to run a basic Clang plugin. You will then compile this into a shared library such as libhello.so. We will then run this invocation to summon our plugin. Here, we're loading all the plugins in our libhello library and passing them to Clang's CC1 process. The CC1 flag indicates that we only want to run the front end of the compiler. Here, we're telling it we want to run the plugin we've named hello, and we want to run it over this example.c program. As always, let's take a simple program to see how this would work. The example.c file has just one function, sum, of type int. If we have implemented the visit function decal method, we would get this output. If you go back to our first video, you'll see this is just like the ASC dumps we've made back then. And now you can do it using your own code. Similarly, if we were to run this using visit parm var decal, we would get this output. Notice that each line represents one of the parameters of our function. Today, we saw how to write all the boilerplate we need to write our first claim plugin. In the next video, we'll try to build something a little more interesting using what we've learned so far. Remember that the code that we have seen today is publicly available in the course's repository. Feel free to play with it. If you have questions, you can email me. Also, suggestions and comments are very welcome. Thank you.